So uh, as I mentioned, we have a bunch of different camera manufacturers and models that are supported. There is a search here up at the top where you could you know, type in uh, a camera manufacturer. You can type in a, a camera number or a model number. So if I type in MIC, it'll automatically, it'll start to filter down as you type in more, it will continue to you know, filter down uh, to get to more and more specific models. If you don't have a specific model you're necessarily looking for, uh, but you do know, let's say the manufacturer, so we'll just select Vigilon, and we know a form factor. So I know I, I definitely want a dome form factor. And let's say I know, you know I also need, um, let's say uh, eight megapixels or higher. So I'm gonna do eight megapixels or higher. And now we can see those models that come up that have eight megapixels or higher. Let's say I also know I do want IR. So I'm gonna make sure I have at least in this case, 12 meters of IR available. And now I am filtered down to these cameras that support the resolution we're looking for, the form factor we're looking for, and the IR that we are looking for. And so we can highlight one of the cameras, click select this camera, and now we'll see our model uh, has changed over to a specific model. And there's a couple other changes here as well. If I look at a generic camera, I can drag and move and change my field of view, uh, you know, as wide up to 180 degrees, uh, as narrow as I want to go. Uh, and so I have full flexibility when I'm on my generic camera. I can also adjust my resolution so I can manually, uh, let's say make this 4K, um, you know, change my distance, et cetera. All those things can be adjusted in truly a, a calculation standpoint on a generic camera. When we look at a specific model, based on the specifications of the that camera, I'm going to be, the interface is going to limit me. So if the, the camera specifations say the widest field of view available there is 92 degrees, it's not going to let me drag it past 92 degrees. It's actually gonna give me an error saying that upper in the very upper right-hand corner, camera model restricted to 92 degrees uh, and vice versa. If I try to make it too narrow, it's going to say the camera model is going to be too narrow. And so uh, that can be really helpful in terms of sort of a gut check to make sure the cam your camera you're selecting, the design you're putting together is going to actually be able to see the field of view as you uh, expect to see it. A couple minor things you can also do is you can change the color of the camera. So let's say you want this camera to be green uh, and maybe I'm doing it by camera model. And so this camera, I'm gonna have this be a red model etc. So there are some customization options there as well. Now, a few other things that you probably notice uh, on the field of view. So there's this red line here. That is the specified distance that um, the IR is effective. Now that is again specified. So a lot of these things we are, you know, basically going off of what is on the spec sheet for the manufacturer. Whereas our testing is shown that not all 4K is equal, not all IR is equal. And so I would definitely have to recommend, you need to understand in the real world, how these, thing, how these things work. Is the IR really effective to that distance uh, or does it hotspot in certain areas? So we don't necessarily have that level of notes and details in the camera calculator, uh, but we do provide basically the specifications. Uh, where is the camera position found, i.e. height, yep, we'll look at that, and importing floor plans we will also look at. So one of the things we see on the field of view is there's a couple different um, gradients of colors for this camera. And so uh, if we take a look here, we'll see different uh, shades, essentially, of green. Uh, it might be a little bit difficult to see on Zoom, um, but if we keep going out and keep going out, we'll see eventually we'll have four different zones uh, in areas for PPF zones. And by default, uh, it's 150 and 10 pixels per foot. And then everything beyond is going to be one zone. Uh, based on our testing, that is where we see most systems uh, in terms of facial recognition, uh, license plate recognition, people detection, and then beyond people detection. So those are kind of the default areas where we will uh, try to help and sort of quickly define where you may have facial recognition on this camera, like for specifically for a visual on, our testing is shown 90 to about 110 pixels per foot required for facial recognition. 
And so we note that, um, you know, just breaking up some additional further lines, 50 pixels per foot. And as I mentioned, out to 10 pixels per foot. And you'll see here under our simulated person, that's gonna show you at this distance, uh, you know, a simulation. It's gonna tell you at this distance of, in this case, we're gonna manually enter hundred feet we're going to be getting 27.9 pixels per foot at that distance. And here's a simulation of what a license plate and what a person is gonna look at at that distance. We can manually adjust that and say, well, let's say I know I need, you know, for whatever application, I need 60 pixels per foot. I'm gonna enter in 60 pixel per foot. It's gonna automatically adjust my distance uh, for, that, uh, for that camera to say that's where uh, you will be able to get 60 pixels per foot. And you'll see that reflect here within the simulated person. Now, someone asked about camera position, height, angle, et cetera. The next section down we have is called blind spot. And so by default, every camera is set to a 10 foot height with a scene height of 10 feet. So it's basically, you know, if you put this on a ceiling, it would be looking out, you know, straight across the ceiling and down, not capturing the ceiling, but capturing everything below the ceiling, just to sort of try and give an example. And we have a little image here uh, to sort of make that point. And from here, we can adjust, you know, we want this exterior camera, we're going to put it at 15 feet, get it a little bit out of people's uh, height uh, to reach. And we're going to set our scene height to, let's say, eight feet. Um, you could go as low as like six or seven feet to make sure that when someone walks through at this distance, at this resolution, I'm going to make sure I'm at you know, capturing their entire head. And then we'll see here, you know, that's going to adjust automatically. You can manually adjust your tilts up and down, et cetera. You can adjust your scene height up and down. So you have some, some manual control there. Uh, I like to, uh, you know, just manually enter and just type in a, a set height. I think that's a little bit easier. And then we have a checkbox here where we can show camera blind spot. And now that's going to show on the map for, it's a global setting. So for all of my cameras, that's going to say, you know, it's going to, A, it's going to block out that area where we have colored uh, areas on the field of view. And we're also going to say, you know, we have a distance of blind spot of 12 feet. Now that uh, mathematically, that is the point at which the field of view uh, should be hitting the ground. And so realistically, you know, you might get to, 10 feet or eight feet where you would still capture a person's face uh, within that field of view, but we don't necessarily define that. You know, we're trying to provide the most exact calculations and then you need to sort of have some understanding on, you know, how this is, uh, how this is really going to work in the real uh, world. I'm a couple minutes late, but did I see the simulated scene use actual street map data? All I've ever seen is populated scenes and I can know my, uh, yep. So that is right here. Uh, David, you did, you did miss that, but that's okay. Um, so we have scenes here that are pulled from street view where they are available. Uh, if your camera, if there is no street view available, we do have some default scenes uh, that you can use. So in this case, we can, you know, let's say this one is in an office then we can choose like a conference room or if we have a hallway. And as you mentioned, uh, David, you can also upload your own scene and um, you click here, add your own scene. And now you can, you can choose your image to upload it, uh, to upload the picture from, you know, potentially the exact location uh, that you are looking at. So good, uh, good question. Uh, does this camera sector have a generic like camera choice that could be used to account for customers who have existing cameras uh, that they want to integrate? So, yeah, I mean, so for, in terms of, um, you know, that default camera is that generic camera. If you're looking for something uh, different than that, I'm not, uh, I guess, exactly understanding your uh, question, but the generic camera, the default camera is going to be a generic camera where you could adjust you know, let's say the customer has a bunch of four megapixel cameras uh, generically, but if there isn't, the model isn't loaded, like for example, you asked for a FLIR camera. And so if the model isn't loaded and you don't see the FLIR model that you're looking for here, um, what you can do is we have this want to add a missing camera, let us know. You can click on this link. It's going to open here. 
And you can send us a message saying, uh, can you please add this model? Any information you can share with us is great, whether it's a, a link, a hyperlink to the manufacturer's webpage or something like that. If you reach out to us, uh, typically it's within one to at most two business days, we can get those models added to uh, the system for you. So a uh, good question as far as that. Uh, as far as that goes. So uh, here we're looking at, we've looked at obviously a bunch of exterior cameras. Uh, somebody asked about floor plan upload. That's what we're going to look at right now. If you have uh, interior cameras, you can add in a floor plan and it's going to support JPEG, BMP, PNG, and PDF. Someone asked about CAD drawings. Uh, we do not currently support CAD drawings. Um, and uh, they also asked about after work, the drawings, uh, could we download it back into AutoCAD? Again, we don't support uh, exporting into like a DWG or some other type of, uh, some other type of AutoCAD, uh, you know, vector format or something like that. It is something that we have, uh, we have considered. It's on our floor or on our roadmap uh, to some regard, um, but we, it hasn't been a strong enough uh, basically request for people to, the, the bigger request has been to load in like a DWG or, or some sort of file like that for a floor plan. Uh, that's one that's more likely to happen uh, maybe in like the next year, uh, but we don't have any really concrete plans to do an export uh, into like an AutoCAD format. And so I'm going to browse for a floor plan and I should have a default one. I'm going to open it up. And so it'll do a quick check here to make sure that the, you know, the file size and everything is good. Uh, basically anything over five megabytes is, you know, going to give you a warning, could be a problem, going to check your format, confirm your dimensions, et cetera. And so now we have our floor plan uploaded. I can move it around, drag it, you know, put it wherever I wanted. And you'll see there's a little um, like dimension tool here. So we can automatically scale the floor plan for you. So I'm going to drag this here and drag this here. And I'm gonna, you know, just say that that door there is three feet. Obviously the more uh, accurate you can get if you have like, you know, physical dimensions, like, you know, this is, you know, 20 feet from side to side, then do 20 feet uh, from side to side and define it. The more accurate you can be, the better results uh, you're going to get. I'm just going to do this roughly for the sake of the presentation. So now this is automatically scaled. This is clearly not the floor plan from this building. Now, one of the things we do find and we would, we would sort of recommend is once you start working with the floor plan, if you have your exterior cameras laid out uh, based on like a satellite map and, and you're happy with those, how those are, uh, switching to blank can be a good option uh, to once you start working on a floor plan. There are some zoom limitations. So based on the satellite imagery that's available in any specific region or area. So right now, like I can't zoom in any farther. You'll see my little zoom in uh, is blanked out there. Uh, whereas if I switch to my blank view, now I can zoom in much farther uh, and see more detail and be a little bit more specific with my, uh, my camera placement. Um, take a look at the questions. This, uh, awesome. Uh, is there a way to brand? We'll take a look at the exports uh, right now. Ron, it's a good question about branding. Uh, the exported PDF, uh, that is something uh, we should be adding next year. Uh, but it is, there is not a, a straightforward way of doing it, but I can probably show you a way. If we don't get to it today, uh, you can reach out to me directly, Ron. It's just Sean at IPVM.com and I can, uh, we can talk to you about that. Uh, I missed uh, how you went to blank view. So uh, if you look here, we have a lower left-hand corner and we can switch between satellite uh, and blank. So very lower left-hand corner, just typical Google Maps controls. Uh, it's worth noting, I suppose, that we are actually going to be updating this uh, this menu interface, whatever you want to call it, uh, to make this a little bit clearer uh, of what you're actually going to be changing. So good question, Megan. Uh, so Jim asked, I didn't see a 360 option in your camera selector. Did I miss it? So uh, yes and no. So we can go to add our camera and let's say we wanna add a fisheye camera here. Uh, we go to select our models. You can look at the uh, horizontal angle of view and I can move this up. Uh, let's just leave it there. So now we are at 
um, you know, anything over 170 degrees, that's typically going to be, you know, within your fisheye range. Let's just jump to axis and grab a fisheye. Now we have two different options for pretty much every fisheye um, that is like a true fisheye. We also have multi-imager cameras loaded. Uh, so if you have like a multi-imager, a fixed multi-imager, uh, repositional multi-imager, multi et cetera, uh, we have those in. Uh, but if you uh, have this here, you can switch between a 180 to 360 degree option, effectively if you're doing a wall mount or a ceiling mount. So I'm gonna select my 360 degree option here and I'm gonna put this down uh, in the middle of this, this room. And so we can see here, uh, we actually have the different fields of view. We're going to be updating these and have a few more options uh, for the 360 degree view. Right now uh, we have two uh, outdoor scenes. We're gonna be adding some uh, indoor scene uh, offerings for, uh, for fisheye cameras to the simulated view. And so done, answered that. And so now we have our cameras and I'm gonna duplicate this. And I'm going to add a camera, you know, let's say over in this hallway. And now I'm going to add a new camera. And like I said, we can do the um, repositionable multi-imagers. So I'm going to select this camera. And uh, let's see, is this one? So here we go. Uh, we have a filter where you can uh, look at your multi-imager specifically. Now we have a couple other options you can use here. One thing we do is we will mark uh, camera models that you use as recent. And so um, some people asking about the blank view, uh, so that's good. And so um, you can select different multi-imagers. Oh, sorry, recent. So we will automatically mark cameras that you've used as recent. And the more often you use those cameras in your designs over multiple projects, the higher in the model list those will be. So recents will always be there and always be available sort of at that top of the list because that's generally the way integrators work. You're gonna have you know, five or six models that you're using all the time. And then we actually weigh it of, let's say you do a project and it's a specialized project and they want one specific model you rarely use, but they need 200 of them. Well, you're gonna have one project with 200 of those, but you might have 200 projects that have three of one other specific model. And we actually weigh the recent list uh, to ones as you use them on more projects versus you know just total count of what you uh, have been using. And so we're gonna select a multi-imager camera. And so now we can see we have uh, four imagers, you know, contained within this one camera. I'm gonna change my distance down to let's say 20 feet. And so now I can independently point this camera uh, wherever it needs to go. And let's zoom back in our floor plan. And so, okay, I'm gonna have this camera is looking at these couple doors. This one is gonna look at my exit doors. This one's looking down my hallway here. And so you can very see, very quickly see uh, as this starts to get really cluttered, it can be difficult to uh, effectively see what's going on. And so what we have is a feature called uh, walls. So we up in the upper left-hand corner here, you can add walls and it's a drawing tool where you just click and you continue to draw out walls. And I'm just gonna do this roughly for the sake of demonstration. So I'm gonna add some walls here and walls here and keep working our way through. And you just keep clicking and you can just keep drawing walls. And you'll see it's creating those little points. You can uh, go back and uh, adjust some of the specific points if maybe you don't like where the wall was drawn. And then to complete the wall, you can either click back on your starting point and that will complete the wall, or you can just double click anywhere and that will complete the wall. So I'm gonna click back where I started and now it cleans up the drawing, uh, those overlaps, all those areas where, you know, cameras coverage outside of field of view, et cetera. I'm actually coming to, going to come over here. I'm gonna draw another exterior wall in here. And so it takes my exterior camera and doesn't, doesn't cover up and show a bunch of the field of view covering, uh, you know, the inside areas there.
look, uh, take a quick look through questions. It'd be nice to add objects for other device types. Uh, great, uh, great response or uh, feature request there, Mark. Uh, we definitely are looking at adding in other device uh, types to the system. Uh, Real-time survey, a uh, good question. I'm gonna take a look at that in a second. PDF floor plan can be uploaded. Yep, so that's uh, what we have shown already. Just going through questions really quick. Uh, is there a way to make a traditional 90 degree camera use a ceiling mount camera or does it only work with 180 fish eye? Um, I'm not 100% sure what, uh, as far as that go, or sort of what you're asking there. What we do offer with, uh, with your traditional like dome or bullet cameras, is you can change it to like a hallway format. So just again, for the sake of demonstration here, uh, let's say this camera is looking down a hallway to offer coverage there. I can load in my hallway scene, switch it over to a corridor format, and it'll switch it from like that 16 by nine to you know a nine by 16. Uh, format for viewing. So rather than really wide, we can automatically adjust it to a hallway format. I'm not exactly sure if that's what you mean, Paul. Um, so if you want to clarify that. Um, any possibility of adding each camera list price as a data point? Um, it's That's something that uh, we uh, originally had in our camera finder. And, and I, I guess on some levels, we still have on the, the camera finder. Uh, but it is not something that's a priority right now. I think that's something we could consider. Uh, but the bigger problem is uh, effectively for, because we have 9,000 models and we have so many different manufacturers uh, that are loaded, getting the list price from, uh, from all those manufacturers. And as companies update list price, it's one more data point where um, it's a lot more complex com complex to make sure that we are doing it accurately. Um, so uh, how does the calculator uh, calculate PPF? Please show me an example. Uh, so uh, basically it is looking at the resolution uh, divided by the width and uh, returning PPF based on uh, the width of the field of view at that distance. So as we decrease our distance, we can see our PPF goes up because our distance goes down. And so you could use that uh, certainly to calculate PPF at uh, specific distances. Uh, is the demo going to be saved so I can review it again at a later date? Um, it is being recorded. I don't know if we are going to post it or not, uh, but if you want uh, sort of more follow-up or feedback, uh, just email me and uh, we can set up like a one-on-one -on -one session uh, if you are interested. Can you lock a camera once placed on the map or floor plane? Great question, uh, Troy, you absolutely can. So up in the right-hand corner, we can lock our camera. It'll actually put a little lock icon onto the camera. And uh, then you know that that camera is locked and you cannot move it. You can also lock floor plans, uh, basically any uh, feature within the calculator any device that's placed onto the floor plan can be uh, can be locked so you don't move it around and um, mess it up. So great question. Thank you, Troy. Are you able to show a field of view from directly overhead, like down at a gaming table? So we do offer that um, when we look at our uh, down tilt, but there are some, admittedly some complications or limitations there. So if we look at our down tilt, the main thing you have to make sure is, so let's say it's on a ceiling and we're in a casino. So let's say it's at a, a 14 foot ceiling. And one of the problems will come in as you down tilt to a certain point, it's gonna say you can't down tilt it anymore because our top of our field of view is gonna show you nothing. Uh, so what you can do in that situation is you can, uh, basically, you have to make sure your distance is really short. And now we can see um, it's not going to do like a circle or a box uh, field of view. It's still going to be like kind of a cone shape. But you can uh, basically see what your PPF is going to be 
in your blind spot, you can have it pointing straight down and you can adjust the tilt, you know, uh, as you need it to go. Uh, however, it is going to be, uh, it, it's going to be a little bit, you know, uh, maybe not exactly what you're looking for. So it's going to kind of depend on how specific you want to get uh, in terms of field of view. It's, it's not currently really designed to maybe properly display like so the calculations all of those things are correct um but the display standpoint that's such a uh a niche thing we have not currently kind of uh resolved or figured out how to display that uh that properly uh how realistic is a simulated person i feel like my actual views are better than what it looked like when i laid out well uh i mean i guess that's a good thing the simulated person is specifically and we have uh, I want to say thousands, but it's definitely hundreds of simulated view images. And so as you switch through like each thing, pixels per foot, uh, that is mathematically, that is the pixels per foot uh, across that field of view. Um, so one thing to keep in mind is this is obviously ideal. Uh, so it could be worse if your lighting is worse and it could be better. Uh, you know, in terms of some of the quote unquote magic, whether it comes to WDR um, or other things that the camera manufacturers may do to produce an image, or maybe your lighting is better than, than what we have here. Uh, same, you know, whether you're dark or with IR or using a super low light. So these are, these are simulations. They are, uh, at least in my experience, again, doing designs, they are uh, relatively accurate or maybe a little bit conservative. And, um, you know, but in general, I think it's a pretty good uh, example in terms of, you know, identifying a person or a person's face. Are you available to do this session for a company team? Absolutely, especially if you are members. Um, if using the generic camera scene, can you search the camera database for cameras that would mean meet scene requirements? So you can, there is, uh, there is filters for that, as I uh, as I showed, and maybe I already answered this, and that's an older question, uh, but you do have filters in terms of uh, the resolution, the form factor, uh, IR, et cetera. We also have added a new feature uh, that I wanna highlight right now, uh, which is an NDA only filter. So if you click on here, you can see uh, cameras that we have gone through and started to filter out uh, cameras that are uh, NDAA compliant. And so this isn't necessarily an exhaustive list at this point. Uh, we are continuing uh, continuing to update it, uh, get details from manufacturers. So if you have, uh, if you are from a camera manufacturer and you know you have specific cameras that are NDAA compliant and confirm that with us, then you can reach out to us and we will mark your cameras as NDAA compliant. So we have a range of filters that are available. So let's say you know you need an NDAA compliant bullet with, uh, you know, 4K while, well, you know, you're, you're, you know, looking at these four options, you know, for those, for those resolutions, for that form factor, et cetera. So we definitely do have a way to filter down uh, that. Uh, does the radar view indi uh, indicate Dory levels? Not specifically. Uh, can you post your email? Yep, I can post my email. I will post it at the end. Uh, AI cameras listed. So we don't necessarily uh, list out uh, whether a camera has AI uh, analytics or not. There are uh, certainly dozens or hundreds of AI cam uh, cameras in the, uh, in the uh, database of cameras we have loaded. And anyone have a suggested project we can easily use in the field to determine precise distances for the desired field of view? Uh, so sort of like a, a laser, uh, laser tape, I would presume, you might be looking for, you can do like a laser uh, tape measure uh, to determine precise distances. Um, but yeah, I guess maybe if you're looking for the width of the field of view, that could be a little bit more uh, complex. And that's where uh, in some cases, Google Earth and uh, Google Maps can come in. Uh, we actually have, so let me uh, show another tool. We don't uh, necessarily talk about a lot, but it's something we have uh, available. So in here, we actually have a measurement tool. So if you needed to know what the distance from one side of the building to the other side of the building, 
we can say that's, you know, 94 feet, give or take uh, for that width. And so if you uh, even look at, um, and it's just like a single use tool and we can say, uh, look at our door. And that's a three foot door just as a sort of like a sanity check there. So uh, we do have a, a calculation tool or a measurement tool built into the calculator. Now, one of the other things uh, that we have for a feature is the ability to run the calculator on your phone. And so what I'm gonna do here is open another tab and I'm gonna go to calculator.ibm.com. And uh, this could look a little weird because it's gonna be behind it. But if you open, the calculator, and you can do this on your desktop, or you can certainly open on your phone. So if you go to the same URL, you go to the same uh, same website, and you log in with your smartphone, tablet, what have you, we actually have a, a mobile version of the calculator. So it's, it's not anything you have to download. It's not an app. It's uh, responsive. Basically, the calculator is responsive to the screen size that it's being opened on. And so we can create a new project. Uh, enter an address in, so 397, uh, well, we'll just grab this. And so um, now we have this available uh, on a mobile, and we've had this released for a while, uh, but you can add cameras and you can build a system design. You can add floor plan. One of the interesting things we have for adding floor plans in is um, obviously on my desktop right now, it's gonna pull up this regular menu. If you're on your mobile device, it's going to allow you to pull up your phone's camera. So if you're at a location, let's say you don't have a floor plan, the customer doesn't have one, they didn't send it to you, but they have a fire exit. You can go in and take a picture of the fire exit to have your floor plan loaded in the system. And you can scale it, you can do all the things that we offer in the full, uh, you know, the full version of the calculator you can do this within the mobile version. And so where this can be really useful is when you're doing, uh, you're doing a walkthrough, I can start to add cameras, you know, and move them and drag in, pinch to zoom, all these things, all the controls that I have um, in the desktop calculator. However, I can also add my view in. So somebody asked about, you know, Google Street View or, or, you know, some of the different scenes that we have loaded. And you can go through and you can scroll through and pick the default scenes. But again, one of the, the really important things or, or impactful things that an integrator can do uh, in terms of presentation to the end user is you can upload a scene. And again, I'm on my desktop, so this isn't gonna work. Uh, but if I have a camera that's available, it's going to ask if you want to take a picture. So now I can walk around the facility while I'm doing my, you know, system design and doing my walkthrough. And I can take uh, images of each specific location where cameras are going to be looking. So now when I turn in my project and when I, uh, when I have a new project and I go into it and I open it in the full calculator, all of those you know, uh, specific images are going to be available to view within the full calculator. And so I'm not going to have uh, two separate systems. It's going to allow me to have those specific field of views from that specific location. Rather than a generic hallway, I can go take a picture with my phone and have it automatically upload to the system uh, as the, you know, real field of view. Uh, yep, and so I think that that answers a question that came about 20 minutes ago um, from uh, Bienson. And yep, just taking a quick look at questions. Thank Kyle or Kian uh, posted my email to there. And so now we have, uh, again, we have our system designed. There's a lot of other uh, more complex and more detailed things that you can get into uh, in terms of like when we looked at earlier, the PPF zones, we offer, let's say those PPF zones don't, you know, aren't working for you and you have different, different requirements for facial recognition or something like that. So under camera view options on the right hand side here, you're going to see some project level uh, features that uh, we have available. One of the things is uh, a lot of times, you know, if you want to use this for like submittals for a bid, uh, 
submitting something that has like non-standard camera icons can be an issue. So we have an option to turn on simple camera icons, which is going to switch all of the camera icons over to what we would call our generic or our box camera icon. Whereas we have, you know, obviously some dome specific, you know, we have multi-imager specific icons. We have dome specific icons. If you don't want to use those, you can turn those off by switching over to simple icons. Uh, we also have, you know, we turned on the, the wall blind spots. Those are enabled by default. Camera blind spots, we showed uh, enabling those. We have a couple more options well where we can show um, only selected cameras. So it turned off the field of view. So if we look at all cameras or selected cameras, we can actually turn off the field of view of cameras to kind of clean up the drawing as we're working on it, especially on a really dense design then that can be a useful option for uh, being able to maybe make adjustment or see what's uh, happening a little bit better. You can also turn them off completely. Again, for maybe a submittal to an electrical company where you want to make sure that they're just installing cameras or they're installing cables where you have cameras, I'm going to switch over uh, to a um, you know standard field of view and or I turn off my field of view so that electrician can just see where the cameras need to go. They don't need to see where they're looking, uh, et cetera. You can just turn those off completely. And so when you do an export, that can be uh, something that's useful. You can also, as I was getting to, adjust your camera blind spot or your PPF zone, sorry about that. And so we can come in here and let's say I know 100 PPF isn't enough for my facial recognition. Let's say I need 150 PPF. I can adjust my PPFs, uh, but maybe I do LPR at 30 pixels per foot. So I'm going to change this to 30, and it's going to automatically adjust my PPF zones uh, to, to where I need them. And let's say I have a really good uh, people detection that works out to four pixels per foot. I can adjust this to four, and it's going to automatically adjust my zones as we go. And I can even customize my zone colors. So maybe I want my zone one to be red, my zone two to be purple green, blue, et cetera. So I can customize my zones. Now, one thing to be aware of, as you get into more advanced features like that, you do need to understand uh, how these things will interact with each other. And so if I have, let's say, uh, let's go back and customize my PPF zones and my zone two, uh, my zone three, I'm gonna make red. So I'm gonna do a bunch of, uh, let me go blue here, okay three red. Okay, so what I have to be careful of is if I look at this strip here, uh, is that now purple or is that red? <laughs> or is that blue? So you do have to be careful uh, as you lay out a system. If you are using custom colors, the reason why we use one color by default, I'm sorry about that, um, is because you avoid any of those confusions. Uh, based on like overlap, unless again, you are using, uh, you know, different, uh, different colors all together. What type of file do project export to basically what is going to look like when a customer opens a bid design and what programs can they view it in? So uh, last thing we're going to talk about here is uh, sharing and exporting. So one thing to be aware of, you can always uh, share a project by clicking share here. And uh, one reason this is important to understand is that we don't have access to any of your projects. So these are sc stored in an IPVM uh, encrypted, encrypted location. And nobody from, from IPVM can access your projects. If you have issues or need support on your projects, you'll need to share this permalink with us because we can't just look up uh, we can't look up Adam's account and say, hey, uh, which project is it in your account? We have no access to it. And so this is also a way you can share a project with uh, someone else. Now, uh, we've had some questions and we're definitely going to be looking at uh, in next year, the ability to uh, collaborate on projects from people within your own company. Right now, the only way to basically share a project and collaborate is to send them a project permalink. And so now this is not the same project. This is a effectively a, a carbon copy of that project. So any changes that I make here are not going to be reflected uh, with the main project. So that's definitely something to be aware of. You can share projects, have someone you know make a design, and then they can uh, share that project back with you. 
again, uh, there, there are admittedly some limitations here uh, to where now this still is not part of my projects and it's not going to update my original project. We, aware, uh, we are aware of this issue. Uh, it is a feature request that has been, uh, has been noted for uh, quite some time and we will be addressing this uh, next year uh, to offer a way to truly collaborate on, uh, on projects with people. Report, can you add the image display the camera in the report? Uh, not 100% sure, Arthur, what you mean. Um, but yes, I believe I sort of showed that in the mobile app version where you could actually, uh, you actually do that. For a shared project, does a receiver need a license? No, they do not. Uh, because again, it can be used uh, for free. It, it gives them access. Again, they can't they can't add cameras. If it has over four cameras, they can't add any new cameras. They ha there are some limitations, certainly if they aren't a member, uh, but uh, there is uh, certainly access to the project. Then in terms of exporting, so let's say, you know, we don't want to have it in the camera calculator format. So we have some different formats here. These uh, also will be updated uh, sometime, realistically by mid-year next year, but we do have uh, different formats that are available. You can do snapshots, a zip file, which is basically a collection of snapshots, CSV, which we'll look at, PDFs, Word documents, and PowerPoints. Uh, the ones that I generally recommend the most uh, is PowerPoint and CSV. And so I click here and I'm gonna do PowerPoint, I'm gonna do CSV. It's gonna start my export and it's going to process through those. And I uh, did my CSV and my PowerPoint. And so I'm gonna open up the PowerPoint. Uh, one of the reasons I like PowerPoint is it gives you this nice uh, title block where you can put in your name. Uh, somebody asked about a logo. Here's a good place. When I was an integrator, I would load in like the customer's logo and my logo. It just becomes more flexible and editable. It's a little bit more work admittedly uh, because you have to a few extra steps, but if you want to customize and have a little bit more control on how the project looks, then uh, PowerPoint to me is one of the better ones. It's also powerful uh, to me in that it's one camera per page, whereas PDFs will do two cameras per page. And so we'll see here, all the cameras I've listed out are, are gonna be here. And it's gonna have, if I have specific models, it's gonna have those uh, models. If it's generic, it's gonna have, you know, generic camera listed. It'll have a picture of the model if we have it loaded all the details, tilt, scene height, simulated view, simulated person, camera name. This gives you the chance to rename the cameras after the fact, uh, if you didn't maybe rename them in the project. And then someone else asked, also asked about uh, loading in their own logo. This is where when I was an integrator, I would have selected all of these pages and pasted in uh, a single image over the IPVM logo <laughs> to put my own logo onto uh, onto the PowerPoint. Uh, so uh, again, that's something we're looking at for next year as a feature to uh, if you're like a, a group member, you can have your company's logo uh, get placed there. It is a common request, uh, but it isn't uh, necessarily uh, something that we are ready to tackle at this point, but that will be coming uh, with an update uh, in the future. So uh, thank you for uh, for that input. And so uh, that's our PowerPoint. Again, this is one I would highly recommend everyone using. And then if you want the customer to be able to view it, then you would come in here and save it as a, a PDF and then they could view it. And you know, again, that gives you flexibility to put in a whole bunch of different formats uh, you know, so that people can, uh, your customers can look at, at the project. And then we also offer a CSV uh, export and this will be updated a little bit in the new future as well, because we're gonna be adding some new features and capabilities to the calculator that's gonna have more data points available here. Uh, but the CSV is really nice, uh, which where it lists out your cameras, it'll have the camera models, the resolution. This was also one that I really liked as an integrator uh, where I could turn this over uh, to technicians and they would know, they could basically correlate. If I have like a 200 camera project, I know the camera five is this model. Uh, I'm gonna make sure I have it on the right settings. Uh, I'm gonna confirm like the camera height. I'm gonna be able to look at my map and correlate to where I'm gonna be, you know, where it's gonna be looking uh, from a field of view standpoint. And then I, a lot of times would take this notes section and I would, you know, put Mac address or serial number. So the technician could 
fill that out for each camera. I maybe would put IP address. <clears throat> and so a lot of integrators have tools uh, already for doing these types of things. But for those that don't, uh, and there's certainly, uh, there's certainly many that also don't necessarily track these things, it was something I found as somebody who worked for a smaller integrator as a good first step to at least you build a system, you design it, and now I know I'm going to have to do some as built and some documentation I'm going to need to turn in at the end. And I'm going to use this pre-built spreadsheet that already has a lot of my core uh, information. I'm going to add server that it's connected to if we have multiple servers. So I can basically take this spreadsheet um, and sort of use this as a base for doing other things with uh, with the data that you already designed in the calculator. So I really like the, the CSV export as an integrator. Uh, I like the PowerPoint export. Now, one of the things, as I mentioned, um, you could look at like selected camera and none. Your choices here will be impacted on your export. So I'm gonna re-export this just to look at the difference there uh, where it's only the selected camera. And um, again, for really, dense drawing, this one can be nice where, you know, rather than having a really busy field of view, even on your individual camera exports. So it's going to give me an overview with each camera. Now, one of the questions we get quite a bit, this one looks really bad because I have a, <laughs> I have a large label here. Uh, it's going to automatically adjust the zoom level uh, based on the Google Maps zoom that's available. So Google Maps will have like not super granular steps uh, where it can actually control where it's going to take that snapshot for the overview. And so again, one of the reasons I like PowerPoint is that's going to give me to use uh, picture formats and image tools where I can, you know, crop, expand, you know, make this image here a little bit bigger within, um, within this design and you know, maybe have it look a little bit uh, better here. So I can crop this down. Maybe I don't need that stupid label. I'm going to crop this here. And now I can take this image and stretch it out and make it larger. So again, just another one of the reasons why I like the PowerPoint format. And then if we look here uh, on our individual, so obviously in the overview, we don't have any of our field of view uh, that are active. And then if I go and look at these ones, it's a little bit of a cleaner field of view because it only has the field of view of the one uh, that is specific to that page. So that's another nice option from an export standpoint that I think uh, can work uh, pretty well for integrators and for users to kind of understand what they are getting. And let's see, we answered the type of projects. Um, so how is PPF calculated for fisheye at 360 and 180 degrees? That's a great question, Greg. Uh, it's something that we uh, have gone back and forth uh, in terms of how we um, discuss in doing that calculation. Uh, it is effectively uh, based on 180 degrees. So when it's on a ceiling, uh, because in many cases, you know, it's going to be looking uh, straight down in that case, we are calculating it across the field of view. So we have basically the same calculation across the field of view, whether it's the 180 or 360 versus, um, you know, changing the calculation for all the way around the outside. Um, so that's a, that is a good question, Greg. And if you want a little bit more detail on that, uh, we can handle that uh, offline. Uh, can you export to PowerPoint with the Google map overlay? Absolutely. It's a good question. Um, let me just show that really quick, what that looks like. And, you know, realistically, we, uh, uh, Tom, uh, no, they will see all of them if you share it with a nine member, non-member. They won't just see four cameras. They just wouldn't be able to add any cameras uh, to it if it has more than four cameras already. Good question. Uh, so, yep, we can do the exports with the satellite view as well. And so uh, we only have like uh, basically a minute left. And so the one thing I wanted to to make the point of is we we do a, we can do a lot of things in the calculator. We're I don't want to say we're just scratching the surface, but uh, in some regards, we are just scratching the surface uh, surface here, even in an hour uh, demonstration. 
there's there's a lot more features and and things that you can do and tricks and and tips uh, to use the system maybe in a more effective way. Uh, for example, there's you know we can't uh, we can't rotate this satellite map. It's not supported in the Google Earth API the way we use it, and so you know, if you need to use the satellite map, but you want it that you don't want this building to be crooked, you want to have it straight, you know, you can upload a snapshot from Google Earth as a floor plan and sort of have one that's that's more square or basically looks nicer. So there's some some things you can do and ways to use the system um, that, you know, we don't necessarily get into every single detail. As uh, I mentioned, like we're at an hour at this point, we didn't get into a lot of the different drawing tools that we have av available, uh, drawing rectang rectangles, circles, et cetera. Uh, so we have some markup tools uh, that are available. Um, that again, we, there's just not enough time necessarily to get into uh, all these specific uh, details uh, that we have in the calculator. So thank you, everyone. I'm going to stick around. Uh, if anyone else has more questions, my email and contact, uh, contact me related to any questions for the calculator. My name again is Sean Patton. I am the product manager for the camera calculator. Uh, I'm going to uh, stick around for more questions. So uh, happily, uh, if you have anything else, you can either reach out to me or, or put them into the Zoom Q&A right now. Otherwise, thank you everyone for joining. I appreciate it. And uh, hopefully everyone has a good rest of their day. Okay, uh, satellite view oriented uh, plan north is top, correct. It's always north is top and you can't adjust that. Okay. Uh, yep, and Greg, you can get my email uh, right here. And thank you, Kian posted uh, in the Q&A the link to the calculator guide, which has a lot of help uh, details as well. And let's see if there any more questions. Um, and somebody asked earlier, I don't know if uh, if Charles is still around. I don't know if this type of tool would uh, be what you were looking for to get uh, an accurate measurement. Uh, something like a laser uh, laser measure would be uh, something I would recommend if you want to get. Uh, good distances. I uh, I certainly don't. Uh, something I think we've tested, and something I haven't used in uh, probably five to six years. Uh, but I used to use them all the time, uh, doing walkthroughs, especially actually more doing AV work than um, than security work. Because for AVs like projectors and stuff, you really need to know the distances. If you have multiple projects, are they populating the map simultaneously? Uh, if you have them open? Um, no, I mean, you only have a single one open at any given time. If you have multiple tabs, I suppose, um, you could have multiple projects open and they'd be open at the same time. Not sure exactly. Uh, uh, is there an advanced class for the calculator? There is not, um, but maybe that's something we look into as an option. Um, but certainly those types of things uh, are often better uh, taking it one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, so uh, there is no specific advanced class <clears throat> for the calculator at this point. What we may, uh, I don't even want to, this is sort of, <laughs> I don't, don't know if we want to necessarily even go down this road, but uh, as I mentioned uh, early on, I do a lot of, uh, a lot of our classes uh, for IPVM. We offer courses, uh, VMS, cameras, analytics, installation, networking, et cetera. Um, and one thing we are looking at, or we have talked about in the past is a sales engineering class. 
And certainly a uh, part of that would be system design and uh, looking at some of the design tools that are out there and a, a deeper dive and look into JVSG and Bluebeam and System Surveyor and IPVM Calculator, Accesses, uh, Site Designer, et cetera. But yeah, if you if you have more advanced questions, I would I would just recommend uh, just emailing me, uh, and uh, we can either set up a one on one or you know something like that. So email me. All right. Um, I don't see any other questions. In. Thank you, everybody uh, who joined and everybody who has stuck around. Um, I appreciate it. And all right, I'm going to, we are five minutes after. I'm going to end it at this point. Uh, thank you, everybody who joined. Thank you for the questions. And uh, if you have other people in your company, uh, customers, end users that are interested, uh, certainly we'll be having these uh, on a pretty regular basis once a month. Uh, you know, just uh, just to keep people uh, aware of what we offer and what the tool can do. So thank you, everyone. Have a good day.